Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm a professor of management information system at Martin Business School of Business Economics, CSU Channel Island. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to focus on the OLAP uh, operation um, in the context of data warehouse and business intelligence. And to understand where the OLAP uh, operation or solution is, uh, we need to look at it in the context of data warehouse and data mart. And first, you create a data storage uh, in, in the so-called data warehouse based on source data. And you could generate a subset of the data and put it in the so-called data mark, which is almost like a smaller data warehouse. And in order to allow the user to interact with this type of data, um, it's more efficient and friendly to transform the data from the data warehouse or data mart into a so-called cubes, into a, a lab queue, online analytical processing queue. And usually we have to rely on some kind of specialized OLAP server or engine to help us to, to uh, manage the data in, in this cubes. Um, in, there are several products uh, which can help us to manage the OLAP cubes, such as Oracle's ESS space or SQL Server's uh, analysis services. Okay. So what is a cube? A cube is a collection of data, usually come from data warehouse or data mar, uh, that has been aggregated. Okay, So it's kind of an aggregated data with some details, data still in the cube, which allowed us to query um, the cubes and the performance will be usually much better. So a uh, cube a cube contains multiple dimensions. For instance, the territory dimension, the product dimension, and the time dimension. And within the cube, um, from various dimensions, we have cells. The cells usually are contain measures, which allow us to measure uh, performance. So conceptually and visually, uh, a cube uh, are multidimensional. Uh, sometimes we refer to it as a hyper cube, which is, can be more than two, three dimensions. Cube, uh, on each of the dimensions of the cube, usually we have something called hierarchy, which means some of the attributes in a single dimension may form and hierarchy. For instance, um, let's just use the time dimension example. Uh, the time dimension we can have um, years into quarter into month. So kind of uh, we can uh, drill down and look at the more detailed uh, aspect of uh, the dimension. Um, if we use the time dimension as example, uh, we can have multiple level of attribute, uh, which can help us to form the hierarchy. So we have year on the top, break it down to quarter, and break it down to month. Okay. Uh, let's say in terms of location, uh, we have highly aggregated at the top, and then we have Eastern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere. Uh, for the Western Hemisphere, we have North America, we have the South America. Okay, so that's how a hierarchy along this dimension can be formed. Let's use um, our grocery database as example, the sales um, fact table, um, which has multiple dimensions. One of the dimensions is the product dimension. In the product dimension, uh, we can find naturally uh, the following hierarchy. So uh, the product um, in the product dimension table uh, at, at the, the most detailed level is the product, uh, like product description. It's like product name. There's a longer uh, full description of it. Um, 
in in the operational level, sometimes we use SKU, which is start keeping units number to keep track of specific product. Uh, the surrogate key uh, for this product table is just an auto number. It's just a sequential number for efficiency purpose. And we can actually look at the data uh, in the table itself to kind of figure out um, the structure of the hierarchy. For instance, department, we have grocery and household. We have two possible value. Under grocery, we have food and then drink. So obviously, based on this relationship, we know that department can be break down into category. So in the grocery department, we sell food and drink. And for food, if we look at the value here, uh, the food category can break down into frozen food and candy. And frozen food can be break down into two brands, uh, cold gourmet and then frozen bird. I guess Thanksgiving is coming, maybe. So that's kind of the hierarchy. Uh, the, you, you shouldn't count on the sequence of the column within the table to determine uh, the hierarchy. You need to really understand your data and sometimes study the value stored in the dimensional table will help you determine the hierarchy as well. So how do we use this type of multi-dimensional cube uh, in terms of query uh, this uh, type of cubes? And first of all, we started with the performance measure, which addressed the question, what? And then we need to look at the performance driver, which are different dimensions, to help us to answer the question, why? The operation or the query technique involve including slicing, dicing, drill down, and roll up. Okay, so this is kind of a visual presentation of multi-dimensional cube, and within one one of the dimension or each of the dimensions, sometimes we have so-called hierarchy, as we discussed previously, and we can use the hierarchy to roll the data up. So, for instance, instead of uh, a daily aggregated data, we have monthly aggregated data and quarterly aggregated data and then annual uh, year. Each year um, we have annually aggregated data and so we can roll it up. In the queue actually we will store the result of the rolled up um, and total, subtotal, those aggregated data. And when you view the highly aggregated data, you can also drill down uh, to find out what is actually driving the increase or decrease of some of the performance measure. So let's look at closely um, the roll up and drill down. Um, for instance, um, we have um, we have a cube, um, just kind of visually, uh, regarding various uh, locations uh, by different quarter and by different product type. Okay, and we can roll it up from city or location to country, like that's Canada, and this is U.S. So if you add this two number up um, for this particular quarter, um, this is actually 2000. Okay, For the country level, uh, it is uh, 2000, um, let's say, unit that we have sold. Okay. The drill down is the, um, is the opposite um, direction in terms of the movement. And for instance, if we look at um, the first quarter sales, which is 400, but if we break it down into the, the month, uh, we've got three months, January to March, we have 150, 100, and 150. That add up to be 400, but we can look at uh, the more detailed data. So if you kind of suspect this number is relatively low, and, and then this drill down will tell you that what really troublesome is maybe the February's sales. And, but then if you um, 
if you remember, maybe February we have big snowstorm um, uh, impacting most of our sales region, and you find out that drop is uh, due to the weather factor. Okay, this is how you will use the so-called soft data, like the weather information, to help you to interpret this hard data. Okay, and so soft data actually in business intelligence application is also very important. Uh, and usually it's it's the analyst uh, kind of have the broader perspective and, and knowledge and can associate the soft data with the uh, with the hard data um, generated analysis. Uh, slides, um, in, in this example, uh, we're um, interesting in looking at maybe instead of four quarters of data, we're only interesting in the first quarter data. Basically, we're looking at this slice. From um, from this cube, um, just one one row um, from one of the dimension, and then um, that's usually referred to as a slice. Dice. Uh, basically, we we would create a subset of um, existing cube. Uh, so, in this case, we're going to pick Toronto. Uh, Toronto. Uh, Toronto and Vancouver, uh, and then we're going to pick maybe the first two quarters uh, sales data, and, and also we're going to pick only uh, mobile uh, device and modem. So we end up with um, a two by two by two uh, cube instead of a four by four by four uh, cube. So that's called dice. Okay, you're you're getting a subset of the original cube. Which um, make it easier if you, that's the only subset of data you want to look at for further analysis. And in terms of visually um, presenting the data, uh, sometimes we do use uh, pivot uh, pivot application um, operation. Uh, pivot uh, basically allow you to rotate. Um, rotate the road and column dimension um, with each other. And for instance, we have location as the row and the product type as the column. And then we can pretty much uh, pivot it on the switching the road and column. And that's what we get. Uh, in this three dimensional. Um, cube, we can do the same thing. We can switch the product here, switch the day dimension here, and switch the location here. And so we can have a different view in looking at um, the data that we have in the queue. So in summary, um, we pretty much covered uh, different type of operation in a multi-dimensional data model. Um, road up is aggregation. Um, so we can s sum it up the data from different city into different state, different state to different country, etc. Okay. And we can also navigate um, from highly aggregated data point um, to drill down to more detailed data. That operation is called drill down. Okay. Um, slice and dice is a way to select uh, data from existing queue to create kind of sub queue. And for instance, we can select uh, the sales, uh, but only interesting in sales in the city of Palato. Uh, and the day we're interesting in January, uh, or a particular day in January uh, 1596. And we did mention the uh, pivot uh, operation in, in such as in Excel's uh, pivot table. So this is actually a screen snapshot of the pivot table uh, that I use in our demonstration. And I put in 
based on the query in the grocery data warehouse, I put the data in and, and all the attributes columns from the query uh, have been listed here. And you probably want to um, select um, the measures, uh, which are usually numerical values uh, into this uh, value field which are usually additive, which you're allowed to add it up. And then you can choose um, from one of the dimensions, some of the attribute, uh, such as um, the product dimensions. I choose department attribute and then the category. Uh, department and category, as we mentioned earlier, form and hierarchy. Uh, for the store dimension, I choose uh, the state and then the city, and that's a hierarchy within the store dimension. A third dimension, uh, we, the spreadsheet is basically two-dimensional. Um, so a third dimension we can kind of apply to it is, in this case, um, it's a time dimension. It can be other dimension, but we, uh, we just choose the time dimension, so I can pick year and quarter. And once you, you have it here, you can, you can filter it. So you can have um, all the years or just pick a particular year. And for each year, you can pick a particular quarter within that year. So this third dimension can also have a hierarchy. So Excel's pivot table can be a very um, low cost solution to help you to visualize the data that you have in a data warehouse or in uh, pre-prepared uh, OLAP cubes, uh, as we have discussed earlier. And so it when, when you um, study the, the data model for data warehouse, uh, pay attention to various dimension, OK? And a lot of attribute here for the date dimension. Um, we we want to find out whether that's a holiday. We want to find out um, which um, what day it is uh, in in a week. Um, we want to find out whether it's uh, it's part of the selling season. Uh, and whether it's weekday or weekend, because that all affects our uh, sales. And those are the driver potential affect um, the sales uh, that we have. This is the facts table, which contains some um, measures uh, as listed here. Um, particularly, those are the possible measure. There are other dimension. Um, for instance, uh, the store dimension. Okay, we got similar to our grocery uh, example, we got some basic uh, store information. And once again, uh, for state, county, city, that's a hierarchy. Uh, maybe the region district is part of the hierarchy, but we need to study to find out what they mean. There are other attributes that may affect uh, the sales of individual store. For instance, if the store may have photo processing, facility, financial service facility, it may help uh, to bring in more people to the store. And if you have larger store, that's certainly supposed to generate more sales. And when you first open, may affect the, the sales because new store, um, it take a while for them to get the words out. Um, the total square footage is also a very important um, attribute because we can actually um, use sales uh, per square footage as a performance measure. Uh, for instance, Apple Store is actually one of the uh, highest performance uh, performing retail store. Apple's annual um, per square footage sales is about a little bit more than $6,000. By comparison, Tiffany's uh, per square footage sales is about um, $4,000. So comparing the total sales uh, certainly is a good way to make comparison, but 
you use the per square footage annual sales may be even a better measure. And when you compare that, you may want to exclude the store which has been open for less than a year because they are just ramping up and may not attract a lot of um, customer yet. Uh, if you use that data into your uh, in your analysis, you may skewer the data to bring down the performance. So sometimes you will see retailer announce the performance data uh, by saying that um, that's actually sales for all the store who open more than a year old. And, and that's why we need to have this when it first open um, in, in order to differentiate one data set from the other. Okay, this concludes our t uh, lecture here. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.